Welcome back. We're back working on the 1975 El Camino today. El Camino. And it's got a few running issues. Uh, I've got it narrowed down to what I think it is. So we're going to take a look at that. Now the problem we've been having is a lean issue. It seems to pop back through the carburetor uh, when it's first started and it's still cold. And then at light highway cruise or really light throttle, uh, just cruising along, you can feel it hesitating. I don't think it's fuel at this point. I think it's spark. Now, like I said, the problem we've been having, popping back through the carburetor when it's cold and the stumbling or hesitation at highway or cruise uh, leads me to believe it's an ignition issue. So to prove my theory the other morning, what I did was before I started this, I loosened the distributor and advanced the timing probably 8, 10 degrees. And it ran much better cold. I still had a little bit of the stumbling issue at RPM, but it ran much better cold, which means it needs more timing. So I checked the vacuum advance. And the vacuum advance seems to be bad. And the vacuum advance on these HEI distributors is right here. It's got a vacuum hose on it. And that vacuum hose can run two manifold or ported vacuum. On these smog era cars, a lot of them came with uh, thermostatically controlled vacuum right here to the vacuum advance. I got to tell you, it doesn't work very well. What works best on these HEI cars, low compression smog heads, is manifold vacuum to that vacuum advance. So I swapped this vacuum canister over to manifold vacuum as opposed to ported vacuum, and it made no difference. It didn't pull it in at all, which means that canister is bad. Let's pull the distributor cap off so we can see the internals and watch them move or not move when this vacuum advance is activated. Uh, huh. Well, those don't, uh, they aren't great. Actually, are those doing anything? There's no way that that mechanical advance can work at all. Well, I'm pretty sure the mechanical advance is locked up on this. Uh, okay. You should be able to basically move that pretty freely. Uh, let me show you. This is another HEI distributor. This one's brand new, and I planned on putting it in the Jeep, but it might end up having to go in this. See how these weights are actually spring-loaded? That's the way it's supposed to be. So if I push here, they advance at RPM because of the weight of these arms. And then as it slows down, they spring back. See how easily I can do that with one thumb? Yeah, I can't do that on the other one. Okay, well, that's not the original problem that I thought we were going to have, but... It's the same. Uh, the vacuum advance still doesn't operate, but it's because the distributor's frozen, not because the vacuum advance is bad. Which means I can take the vacuum advance off that and say this is fair, but that also means that we got to pull that distributor, and the one that was going to go in this Jeep, this Jeep is now fine with points. I, I deem it fine. We'll give it some plug wires. It'll be fine. And we're going to put that brand new distributor right in there. Now, one thing we are going to do is we are going to point this distributor back towards number one just to save ourselves a little bit of a headache later. So I'll just place the rotor back on there. There's no need to tighten it. Uh, we, we didn't need that. We're going to line the timing marks back up with zero. Make sure that's pointing at number one, which was written here on the cap on this one, number one. Now all I want to do is get back to zero on our timing marks, and then we'll worry about everything else. Slowly rotating. Slowly, slowly, slowly. We've got our trusty yellow paint pen. Hopefully we can get to that. Yeah, something like that. And there is where number one was pointing. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter uh, as long as when I put the new one in, it points exactly where the old one pointed. But this one is dead ahead towards the carburetor, and it really should be uh, one tower over. So I don't think the distributor was even put in right. And on these GM distributors, the hold down bolt is not even visible, but it, there is a 9 16 bolt and a, and a little C shaped bracket that holds this distributor in place. And it's right down there. I use this fancy here distributor wrench where we can reach in and grab that, get it out of there. But with everything out of the way here, at least I can get sort of like an eighth of a turn at a time on it. That's, that's nice. Oh, yeah. So number one was really facing basically that screw and that's sort of what we want to try to face and if not we'll back it up by a tower there's a bolt and here's that sort of c-shaped clamp or u-shape whatever you want to call it that, that's it put those two together up there we need to clean those up those are filthy now if we're lucky 
and we have sort of been so far to discover that mechanical advance before we went too far, this distributor will pop right out. Uh, end up disconnecting our transmission vacuum line. Remind me to put this back on. But that hard vacuum line is just in the way right now. Remind me that we did that. Come on out of there, buddy. There we go. This one was an easy one. So, at the beginning of this episode, my key culprit was the vacuum advance because I could apply engine vacuum to it and it didn't change the timing. And when you apply engine vacuum to this, it should change it by 8, 10, 12 degrees, something like that, especially at idle. And it wasn't doing it. The mechanical advance, this should not dangle like that at all. Uh, and that is not good to have that locked up. So what was happening was the mechanical advance was already advanced because these should be pulled in uh, and they're not. These should be pulled in by the springs and held in place. These springs aren't pulling tight because it's locked up. So the timing was already advanced. So if I used the vacuum advance, it couldn't pull anymore because it was already advanced mechanically. So then I had to actually turn the distributor to get the timing I needed at idle for it not to pop back to the distributor. But what that does is that makes your overall timing much higher initially, uh, which is going to lead to pinging, detonation, and some running issues on the other end of things. So uh, mechanical advance actually made the vacuum advance worthless, but it led me to at least suspect it. And here we are. That's probably an original one. I, I bet this is all original. And it's all original junk now. All right, time for a new distributor. Uh, make sure you've got the gasket on here because that gasket is going to keep you from having massive oil leaks. Make sure your vacuum advance on these GMs are facing somewhere over here, right about in between cylinders number four and six, I guess. I'm going to want to line it up basically where it was before. Nope, see how this rotor is now pointed this way? That is off by a tooth or two because we need to be pointed here. Well, what you need to do is lift up, kind of feel it on those teeth, go back a little bit. Make sure you're seated all the way, and we are not seated all the way, so we've still got a little bit of lining up to do here. There we go. That is seated, and we are closer to where number one should be on the cap. We can rotate it to get it where we want it. Okay, that is down as far as we need it for now. Got our vacuum advance is still free. We need to pull the cap off of that. Make sure you pull this off because if you put a vacuum hose over this, the cap on, you're still not going to have any vacuum to your vacuum advance. Speaking of vacuum, let's hook this transmission line back up before I forget. Boop. Uh, we'll hook our vacuum advance line back up. That might be a good idea too. There we go. Now let's get all these plug wires out of the way. We've got to do plugs and wires and cap and rotor and timing and whatnot and so forth. Now let's put this cap on. Make sure your little legs are pointed out on your cap. That way they don't fight you and try to get underneath. There we go. All right. And then our battery. Right there. We don't have a tack, so no tack signal. That one is left blank. We've got plenty of room to sit there and play around with advance. Next, I'm going to get all the old plugs out. Uh, then we'll gap the new ones, put them in, and then we'll do plug wires. But let's speed this process up a little bit, shall we? Here's the plugs we just took out. Uh, I've got them on my little spark plug board, just a piece of wood drilled hole in. You can use cardboard, you can use nothing if you want. Uh, all these are looking okay as far as oil deposits or running rich or lean. They're not all gapped the same, and they are Bosch Supers, and that's really the re main reason I'm replacing them, is that they're Bosch Supers, and I don't trust these plugs. Just from experience, I almost always have running issues with these plugs if I put them into any sort of V8 from the 60s through the 80s. So these are garbage, and we're going with Delco. Specifically, we're going to go with the R44TX, which is what the El Camino calls for. R means it's a resistor plug. 44 is a heat range. Heat ranges on Delcos go from 40 to 49. So it's right there in the middle, eh, which is what you expect to see on most of these V8s. Uh, TX means tapered seat for HEI. Uh, T by itself is just tapered seat. X is like HEI wide gap. And what they mean by tapered seat is this right here, this edge between the threads and the body of the plug uh, is tapered an angle, like 45 degrees, 40 degrees, something like that. And if it's tapered, you will not have the crush washers. So don't go looking for crush washers if you've got a tapered seat plug. 
They're not supposed to be there. And don't add them. Again, not supposed to be there. And as far as gap goes on this, if we look over here, spark plug gap, automatic 350, 60 thousandths. If we had a 400, it'd be 60 thousandths. If we had a whatever that is, it'd be 60 thousandths. So basically what they're saying is they want 60 thousandths out of this. I cannot find my spark plug gapper, so I'm going to go with regular feeler gauges. It's 25 and 26. Uh, that is 51. And 51 goes in there nicely. They're calling for 60, but that'll be just fine. So as long as all of them look like this, I'll leave them alone. If they look like they're crushed down from being dropped or something, we'll fix that. And if they're gapped way out here, we'll fix that too. Now we've got the plugs back in. It's time to go plug wires. And if you've got something from the 70s, there's really only one choice. And that's JEGS yellow wires or Excel yellow wires. As long as you have yellow wires, that adds horsepower. It's like stickers or chrome. This is a good 15 to 20 horsepower right here, guaranteed. The HEI ends all look like this. They have got that extra little uh, sort of tapered head to them. The ones that go on the spark plugs, they look like that. Generally speaking, number one and number two are going to be your longest. We can route these how we want later. The plan right now is to get them on in the right order. This on number one. Make sure it snaps on. There we go. Get a good snap. Come up here. Go here. This general direction. And right now, our number one cylinder is right there. Now, this being GM, if you hadn't already guessed in the comments, it goes 18436572. So it goes 18436572. And the deuce. Number eight has the least amount of distance to go. So that's going to be our shortest guy. Let's see here. Now you could lay all these out if you wanted to. Or you can just go one at a time. There's our shortest. Positive snappage and positive cappage. Positive cappage, positive snappage. Positive cappage, positive snappage. Five and seven are the same length. Huh? Well, that's not good, is it? That's what you get with aftermarket wires. Five, positive cappage, positive snappage. There we go. Positive cappage, positive snappage. Positive cappage, positive snappage. Now that we've got that sorted out, snug this distributor down just a little bit so that when we start it, it's nothing too loose. So it'll actually hold something just like that. I've got the balancer marked with white paint, and you should be able to see it come past right there. It's coming right at the timing marks, and that is putting us at 10 degrees base timing. And this engine calls for. Six degrees, eight degrees on the 400, and whatever that is is four. But if you go 10, you're not going to hurt this thing at all. Actually, on these old small block Chevys, uh, if you wanted to go probably up to about 14 base, you'd be fine. Well, that's much better. I don't have that stumble. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have a light hesitation, but I need to go drive it. Right now, I need to let that cool down so I can actually route the plug wires because I don't want to route the plug wires and get third degree burns doing it. But the timing is set. It is at 10 degrees initial. Uh, it is at 35, 36 all in, which is on the high end, but it'll be okay. It's, uh, that's it. My big problem that I thought was vacuum advance was bad mechanical advance. Wait, one last thing I forgot to mention. Depending on which HEI distributor you get, I got this one from Speedway Motors, or according to these directions, Speedwa Motors. It's probably the Chinese knockoff of Speedway, which is already a Chinese knockoff, but knockoff of a knockoff. That's probably the genuine article. This particular HEI has an adjustable vacuum canister, which I adjusted, but I did it without filming because I don't do it very much. And uh, well, I kind of forgot to press play or record. Let's record now, play later. Yeah, I forgot to press record. So here's how that works. Initial timing was set. That was fine. Uh, hooked the vacuum up and I was getting 20 degrees of vacuum advance, which is way too much. You want 10, 12, ish maybe um so what you do is the new hei not this one this is the demonstrator model Ooh. comes with a 330 seconds allen wrench and that goes into your vacuum canister like so and on this particular one that i bought uh, if you go counterclockwise you're reducing the maximum amount of vacuum advance and if you go clockwise you are increasing it so mine was at 20 i wanted it at 10 so I turned it, and you turn it a lot. It's not a coarse thread, it's a fine thread screw. I probably, trial and error, took 
eight to nine turns out of it. So I'll say 10 turns because it's probably one full turn is probably close to one degree. I, I bet if I read farther in the directions, it would say that. Let's say I took 10 turns out of it roughly because I did. Uh, and that reduced me to 10 degrees of vacuum advance, which is exactly what I was looking for. I forgot to include that as a step because I didn't hit record. But there it is. If you bought one that has an adjustable vacuum advance, it'll come with a little tool. Read the directions on which way does what and who, where and why. And uh, that way you don't have too much advance. Just the way it is. All right. Back to our closing statement. Well, uh, like I said, I gotta let that thing cool down. While I do that, you go do whatever you do, and I'll see you next time.